What's up, everybody? M Dog here with your daily or almost daily leveling video. So we're down here at 4332, casting southeast at 15 meter clip. We're going to start off here. You know, there's rumors that this is a uh, up and coming green spot or has been doing okay. And so we want to see how it compares to uh, to a dream spot we've been using lately. If it seems really bad, um, once we get into dream time, we can always move. We're not that far away from our regular one. But if it seems decent, then we will give it a try. It's a nice short clip. Looks like there are bream here. So we can confirm that there are bream here, which is nice. Apparently I need to cast a little farther. Of course, we're using size eight for the most part hooks. And um, 15 meter clip, casting right at southeast, which if you look on the map, this isn't really a, this is really a, a hole that we're casting into, which is typical for Breen. Usually you're casting into a hole. We're kind of casting into nothing, but this does happen sometimes, even at Volkov. Sometimes there's spots where it doesn't 100% make sense that, you know, it'd be like this nice bream hole or something. But so the bream seem to migrate to uh, to shallower areas uh, seasonally or something. So uh, so that's interesting. We'll see how this spot looks though. Um, but what I want to do is after this, I want to go back to that carp spot and really give that a, a little bit of time since we didn't get to stay there as long as I wanted last time. And I th feel like there was a message somebody left me. Maybe it's a good time to look at a bunch of past messages. We'll see. See how active this bream spot is. If we have time to read messages right now. West Side Jesse says, I didn't even know there was a new place responding to the uh, Fishing Planet new map that we did back a while ago. Speaking of new place, if there's a chance that any of you haven't seen this post on the Russian Fishing Forum, let's just highlight this real quick. Let's clear our rods as best we can. That one doesn't have anything on it yet. It's really like still an early, early bream time anyway, so. You know, it's possible that if you are a newer player or if you're a veteran but haven't been paying as close attention lately, you may not have seen this, and so it's kind of exciting to be able to show this on the stream briefly. I do not think the folks at RF4 would mind as we drum up excitement for their game. So we're going to go to the forum here, and let's go under News. And uh, on Tuesday, there's a new post about a new body of water being developed, Tunguska. Tunguska. And... Um, there's what it says there about Tunguska. And actually, I think this is... Something we can look at. It's a, This is a, riv a real river in Siberia, Russia. And so, I also wanted to look at a real picture of it here for you just looks very beautiful. It looks huge. I mean, I don't know, of course, what portion of this we'll have um, in the game. And it's interesting from, from the pictures from the website, it looks like there there's at least one section that is kind of wide open like this and bigger. And then one section that's a little more narrow, at least from what they're including. And here are the two pictures on the RF4 
for them. So you see this one's a little smaller. It looks like they've added some like rapids, some like wave effects. And then here's the, the deeper, more wide open part. So up here it says 20 new fish species. That's exciting, right? And a new type of artificial bait. Do y'all have any guesses on what the new type of artificial bait would be? Um, you know, one thought is, could this be the time they add fly fishing? If you're adding like rocks in the water, some rapids and stuff like this could be that time, but you know, there's no guarantee of that it could just be uh, some random artificial bait. I, I mean, I don't know, but it's going to be interesting to see. So Tunguska, we have very little bit information yet. Uh, thankfully, in the past at least, well, I, I guess I shouldn't say that. I think there's been times where we've gotten some brief information about a new body of water and maybe a while goes by before we see it. But I think there's also been times where once once they start ta talking up a new body of water, it's usually only, it feels like a month or two, right? What is, what is y'all might have better memories than I do, but... It will definitely be interesting to see. Okay, so so far we've got two over a kilo, uh, plus another marker, and we're just now like 30 minutes away from really like the heart of bream time even starting. So, so far this spot looks pretty reasonable. Um, we'll see how it does through the night. Okay, so more comments. Uh, Zion Yash was asking about how to get Again, I think that was Fishing Planet, but how to get uh, how to get the game installed. And unfortunately, I am not a good resource for technical questions uh, for the most part with these games. Hey, White Bream, I wonder if this is the spot that folks were catching White Bream at near camp. I thought it was more further south, but what do I know? I'm not sure. Um, Farid Camille says, thanks to the community, I found this good spot. Oh, this is actually the one that I wanted to look a little more closely on on some of the comments. So this is where we were fishing for carp last time, down at the boot, I believe. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, my mind's going all over the place. But the other question with that Tunguska Lake to sort of speculate about is what level lake will it be? What level lake will it be? It doesn't, my first impression is it doesn't necessarily look like a high level lake. But it all depends on what's in there and what they decide to do. Like if they did, if they did add fly fishing, which I'm not saying they are, but if they did, would they want that to be something that players can do from the start or early level? Or would that be more something like they could retcon it back into some of the older places and then have a high level fly fishing thing? I, I just don't know, but we'll see. All right, so, um, but I believe this, yeah, let me, let me get this ad out of the way so I can make sure that this is where we were fishing for carp down at the boot. Yeah, yeah, this is. So Fareed Camille says, yeah, thanks community, I found this spot good spot yeah that that is a good spot and down fishing near off or near that bridge at the boot i mean that's one of the oldest spots in the game when i first started playing as soon as someone hit as soon as someone hit level 12 for old berg and they didn't quite have the gear for getting into some danger at old berg you sent them down to you know f8 down here fish off the bridge into the pond the fish can't spool you down here really you can wear them out and this was always like this used to be one of those spots just casting right near the bridge towards the pond you could get 100 fish in you know in 24 hours easy this was that was like yeah a lot of it was garbage fish small stuff but you'd also get some nice stuff down there and that was just where you went to basically continue like similar type of fishing you were doing at mosquito but now you're at old berg and so some of the fish are getting bigger and you would catch occasionally would catch a small common carp or something so that is indeed an old spot, but it's typically always a good spot, either off of that bridge or near it. And it just kind of depends on what's going on. All 
I want to read more messages. I'm also trying to figure out, figure out if I need to weigh in on what's being said in chat. Um, smaller hooks on the hunter. I would not change the hooks on the hunters. They've got really expensive hooks on them already. Smaller hook equals more and bigger catch? I, I don't think that's true. I'm not sure that smaller hooks on the hunter is necessarily going to give you more and bigger catch. I mean, I, I haven't like done a lot of research into that, but I, I wouldn't necessarily do that. But, I mean, hey, you can try anything, right? It's very easy to switch the hooks, and then you can just make sure you know which hooks you took off of them because those are really good hooks that come on the hunters. Okay. One of the questions, one of the re responses I wanted to get to uh, was what Cohen said. Cohen says, and again, remember, this is when we were fishing down at the boot at that spot for the carp, which is what we'll be at here after bream time. Um, the spot, see the left ahead, the log in the water is where I fish for grass carp and black carp just with potatoes. Very good spot. Log to your left, cast to the right, two or three meters off the embankment in the green mush. So when we get down there, I'm going to have to pull this, this comment back up because I want to see exactly what Cohen's talking about. Um, p potatoes and carp ground bait. If you don't have the gear like I did, just keep them in the pond and you're fine. Yesterday I made 800 sweet dough, 900 semolina, 15 garlic, 100 garlic dough because I was fishing for bream and wanted the garlic dough. A lot of clicking went from 25% to 40%. Grats, that's awesome. Can make pea porridge and cottage cheese too. Went from 500 silver to 28. That's awesome. It is totally worth doing that. I know it's painful to spend silver like when you're also wanting to save for gear. Um, but the more of those baits you unlock, the more hot spots you'll be able to take advantage from, of, and you'll be able to make that silver back uh, more quickly. It's totally worth it to make bait. And someone asked, what rod is that? Again, the same video, and I believe they were talking about this rod that I'm holding here, our main rod. It's the uh, Express Fishing Palmer FD-150. It's a nice early rod that's got a little bit of load capacity on it, a little stronger than the beginner stuff, but uh, but also very affordable. It's uh, it's not a rod that I would buy at, at like at this point. Now that we're level 15, I wouldn't get it again. I think one is enough because the next rod we get, we're gonna want to um, kind of grow with us. This is a nice bream here. We're gonna hit level 16 during this episode unless things get really cold. And of course, the other rods we're using are these comma comforts that come in the uh, kit, in the feeder kits. We'll see if there's actually a fish or if I just didn't straighten out this line. Flaming Ember says, can you do a fish on how to live bait fish for pike? I've heard it's not worth the expense. I just unlocked the rig and the bait bucket is 967 silver. Uh, yeah, you can catch fish off live bait. I, I would not say, I would not agree with that. It. It's not worth the expense. It's worth it because there are times like even at Ladoga, there's times that like the white fish get really hot off of live bait. I mean, there's a lot of things people do with live bait. That's definitely something that I don't do enough of. Um, and I will try on my main account to maybe, um, next time I see one of those spots, if it's convenient for me, I'll try to spend a little time figuring out how to uh, get dialed in on there. I haven't used live bait for pike very much. All right, there's level 16. Um, that certainly is something that people do, but just remember if you go for live bait, you're not just doing it for pike. Sometimes trophy burbots are, uh, are best caught on live bait. Um, sometimes fish at Octuba do really well with live bait. Same with Ladoga. So, um, so 
So that's what I would say. All right. Oh, and uh, M MPC Calvin is giving us the update of where they caught that uh, trophy bream at Cory. Because I had asked if people have any suggestions on good spots to feed or fish at Cory. And so um, now that we can go to Cory, maybe we'll try some of those spots out. Sounds like it's been about a week ago, so it might be cold by now, but I appreciate you sharing that spot. I think if you were to get sick of fishing for um, for bream, that it would be worth trying white bream in this spot. We're seeing a pretty constant flow of white bream. And by the way, this, this spot has been, um, this spot has seemed to be really good for bream. I like that it's a 15 meter clip. And I like how many of these are chunky bream. And I like that my beautiful wife just brought me some nice hot coffee. All right, so let's see how we're doing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over a kilo. And it's 145, we'll at least get, I don't know, four or five more probably, unless it dies down. Welcome to the chat channel, Stephen50. Remember, if you're looking for a home inside of RF4, feel free to search for MY space DAWGS by clicking on this wheel here and typing what I just said. And we've got 366 players here, really a great community. You know, um, they asked if this is the chat channel of, of MDOG Gaming, and, and I will. Um, and I would say this, uh, I started this in-game chat channel, but at this point, there are people, the, the reason why this is a great chat channel has nothing to do with me. There, there are just really great people in the community that hang out and fish in this chat channel a lot and offer a lot of help and a lot of uh, encouragement for folks. So uh, that really has very, very little to do with me at this point, but I'm really thankful for it. I think there's ground bait on there.
you know, once you have, uh, once you've had an account that you've gotten past level 50 on bait harvesting, it's really hard to see all of these bream, like starting right here, 550 gram all the way to 740 gram. This is basically four, five, six, seven pieces of fish uh, and chances to level up our bait harvesting if we were at 50%. All right, so we're coming up to that decision time of um, when do we want to switch over to the carp spot? I wonder, I, I guess I just have that seven I must have just have the so on this main line we're just using 7.7 .7 fluorocarbon line so we don't have a leader and then on the other two rods of course we're still using the five point whatever fluorocarbon leaders definitely i think a good investment to get that 7.7 .7 fluorocarbon uh, line since the leaders were not available that sounds like a good one I don't know what the brake's on, but it's pulling a little bit. Holy cow. I had the brake way too high for a 5.4 liter. Need to lower that just a little bit. If that had been a trophy, it might have snapped. I don't know about you all, but I'm feeling pretty dang good about this bream spot. I'm starting to tell stories.
Oh, goodness. Big Worm says, uh, five minutes of hitting level 16. Hooked a quarry char, fought it for an hour. Got it beside the boat. It was as long as the boat. Then it ran for 45 seconds headfirst into a rock wall. Fish got away. <laughs> oh, man. Steven just got a trophy roach. All right, it's 521. We definitely keep fishing here a little longer with as good as this spot's been. But I don't think I'm going to stay as long as I would sometimes just because I want to go try that other spot. That is another nice one. Goodness, we are really killing it in this spot right now. This is an interesting fish. It's funny, uh, where we're going to be fishing is just like right over there, but we got to run all the way down to the other bridge to get there. Kind of lost track, but I think this is going to be, other than not getting a trophy necessarily, this may be one of the best Bream Nights we've had in quite a while.
starting to slow down now. This is about when I was thinking we would probably take off. So let me um, what are we gonna fish with down there on our other two rods? Pearl barley and then maybe like maggots. And we'll need to change the ground bait. Yeah, it's definitely starting to get a little smaller here. You could still catch more though. Once we get set up down there, we'll really take a look at, uh, oh, a crucian, that's weird. Uh, take a look at how we did on the bream. But I mean, look at that, we're already like over an eighth into level 17, um, or working on 17 into 16, I guess. Which, I mean, that was just so many bream, so many good marker bream, and uh, the experience really adds up, silver does too. <laughs> That's going to be a really good night of bream with or without cafe orders. All right, so let's head down here. I wanted to look at that. Um, I wanted to understand what Cohen was saying. About this spot. So I was at 50. I'm, we've been f trying out 5313 over here. which is just past the bridge up here. Spot left ahead with a log in the water. Left ahead. All right, first of all, let's get this stuff in there with some, um, we'll put, let's see, which one is this maggots? We'll put uh, crucian gibble on this and we can back this down to like an eight meter. We, we don't want this going. We don't want this going far. And then we'll put some like roach mix on this. Down to eight. A log that's left in the water. This one? Cast right two or three meters off the embankment in the green mush. Wait, what? I'm sorry, Cohen. I may not understand what you're saying. Are you talking about a completely different spot? Are you saying that into that mush over there? All right, let me, let me try this spot for a minute and then maybe I'll walk over there and see if... I think what he might be saying is... I probably ought to get a slightly bigger carp hook, but it's fine. All right, we're also just going to go like eight clip here on this one. We'll see how it does today. Yesterday I was getting really fast bites on the potatoes. Oh, that was a tench on maggots. We could throw fake tench ground bait on, I guess. Because really, you know, what we're trying to do is just find a decent spot during the day, right? Because that bream spot seems to be so good at night. That's, you know, you really just want something during, to do during the day. Um, The spot you see left ahead with the log in the water is where I fish for grass carp and black carp with potatoes. Log to your left, cast to the right two or three meters off the embankment in the green mush. You may have to... Um, 
Oh, maybe he's talking about that log? That's more like a log, isn't it? Not just like a stump. Is he talking about this? Does that make more sense? That may be what he's talking about, like 5812. Maximum total weight. Yeah, and I think if you keep if the logs on your left and you're throwing to the right, there's still a pretty good chance that the fish would, would run right. Just want to make sure with the low level gear that you don't let the carp run out into the wide open part of the part of the uh, lake. So far we've had marker common, gibble, grass, marker tench, marker crucian. Uh-oh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Paradox Publisher Weekend. I like I like Paradox Publisher Weekend.
What what is Amar doing? That's so funny. Alright, so we are getting uh Getting some tinch here. The Crucian Gibble ground bait. Ah, that's what I like to see. Tiny sleeper. Okay. Uh, let me just see if, if the uh, tinch baits have changed at all. Wasn't somebody telling me that uh, they did okay on Tinch with Semolina, right? That's what we like to hear, the destroying of a reel. That actually is what we like to see. Three kilo common carp. Like if we could just sit here and catch those all day, that would be beautiful. And that shows you why this gear, you're not ready for bear. That was a three kilo common, a very small carp compared to what you'll be running into at bear. Okay, we'll give it another couple minutes, then we'll go switch and try that other spot. And you'll just have to let me know, Cohen, if I'm understanding your message correctly. I don't know if it's over there. There's green stuff over there, but it's not very much of it. I'm assuming you're talking about over there, but I don't know. I've definitely fished over there before. I'm not sure if I've fished... I fished farther up a lot. In fact, in that back corner is a really big tinch spot sometimes, but I don't know. I think I have to at least do one, one video of me playing Ice Lakes sometime soon. That's been such a funny, chill experience, like just playing with friends and stuff. 
it's it's a it's a very silly fishing game, but it's kind of it's got its charm for sure. Let's see what we got on this time yeah this is working really good this is the kind of the spot yeah it's a black one too this is kind of the spot kind of spot i was looking for it's like for the most part so far we're getting with a size eight carp hook we're getting like reasonable size carp you know and um it's been fun there's a tench that was on maggots again though All right, let's just go run and try this up here. This may not even be what Cohen was talking about, but let's just try it. Hopefully we won't get snagged on anything here. All right, what is this on maggots? Okay, so it is running left. This is what we gotta watch, right? We don't really want these suckers running left on us. This is probably a tinch. All right, we should be in good spot in in good spot now. Like, there's very little chance that it's gonna like back go back behind us from here, you know. So we just don't want to get spooled. If it pops off, it pops off. But we don't want to get spooled. The way it's getting uh. The way it's running, I'd say I'm starting to lose hope that it's a tinch, but we'll see. Our potatoes are going off over there, I think.
Can't lift it at all, but I think it's coming into us at least a little bit. No, it was a grass carp. Yep, this must be the spot because he talked about catching grass carp and black carp. This was on Semolina. Nice little gibble. So this spot seems to be good. I guess my question is, are there also commons? Because one thing that was nice about that other spot we were fishing at is that we were catching commons as well. Um, commons aren't quite as like nasty as grass carp. So we may have to try that some more, but but both of those spots over there seem like really fun daytime, op daytime options. Wire waiting on bream time. But um, yeah, that uh, that that uh, what was it? Forty three thirty two. Forty three thirty two. So, I never did look at how many we ended up with. Yeah, so look at this. I mean, I usually say as just sort of a baseline, if I can get 12 over a kilo in a spot, I feel pretty good about it. And so the fact that we went 19 over a kilo, that's sick. It really is. It's a really good active bream spot. Didn't quite have a four kilo grass cart, but if we had stayed, we would have. All right, that is a nice uh, bream order for us. 42 silver for just three of these bream. 42 silver. Oh, look how lucky we are on this white bream order as well. 27 more silver. Good grief. Sometimes you can just kill it with the, with the, uh, how did we not end up once one 800 grand? That would have been 13 silver. Okay, so that is a ton of silver and we haven't even sold our fit. Look at that. Less than an hour of fishing. What did we, we almost made 200 silver with cafe orders. We might have hit, actually, we were over 200 silver, weren't we? Wow, we're at 1,200 silver. Um, so, here's my question to you, community. Does anyone know if the Sabre 60 is... Actually, don't worry about it. I'm just going to get it. I know it's not at Mosquito or Winding. 
I'm pretty sure it's not at Belay. But I don't know that for 100%. Either way, I'm just going to get it here. All right. It's our first step towards bear. We have a Sabre 60. Now we're saving actively for something like the Fortuna feeder or something like that. Something big that we can put that saber on. We don't really need the saber for bream fishing, obviously, but for um, for carp, like heck, we could create a second carp rod, uh, a second feeder rod, and actually start going after carp. Where are we on bottom fishing? So we're not that far from inline now. Um, 47.9, we'll get there in the next few episodes. I'm not sure that, I think we probably just save this point. I'm okay with three points in ground bait still. I think we save this point. The other the only thing we might put it in is spinning reel, but I'm thinking we save it so we can add a point to inline rig. Because I will be wanting to switch to inline. We might keep like one pattern oster, two inline or something like that. Okay, hey, as always, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.